Hi everybody, Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Standing here by my 275 gallon IBC tote. It is a uh, well-known water storage tank, often used off the grid for rainwater collection. And uh, forgive me for the hood, I've been running in and out and it's really cold out. I'm going to build a filter for my tote. Let me move this stuff out of the way. I'm going to build a quick and easy filtration system for my rainwater collection for this tote using a pot from a plant and that fits right inside there. It's I got the idea of a pot because it's tapered. It's small on the bottom and bigger on the top so you can drop it in and it wedges in place. Now I've given this a bit of a wash down already off screen and then I realized I better grab my camera because this is pretty cool. Now I've taken some window screen and I've just simply folded it up and I'm just pressing it down into the bottom of this. It's got the drainage holes on the bottom. And what I want the window screen for is to block the uh, gravel from going out through that hole. Now I'm not sure how effective this is going to be until I try it out and see with some heavy duty water pouring in how much it's going to flow. So uh, it's just an experiment. Now I've got some pea gravel from the creek. I'm going to put in here. Actually, I've got the bigger stones going on the bottom first. Alright. Now I've got the gravel in. But I can still see the holes. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. But I can still see the, the holes out the side. So now I've got to put in some smaller gravel. And it's going to be a little bit heavy when I'm done. But with the tapered sides and i got a, a thicker pot. I had these flimsier pots. They have better drainage on the bottom see but um, I just don't like how uh, flimsy it is I don't know I was trying to show you the drainage holes through the bottom there you can see better the white background a lot of drainage but it's so flimsy I just don't like that and this doesn't have as much drainage but it's more firm so it means it's going to hold up to all the weight of the sand and gravel and water in there so I'm going to get some pea gravel I'll be back in a minute All right, now I've got that filled up. If I can show you without spilling any, I've got that filled up with gravel to a halfway point. Okay, now I've got some play sand. This is sold at, at any hardware store or lumber yard. It's a Quick Creek brand uh, play sand, which is perfect for a filter like this. And now I'm just gonna put it in to cover the gravel. I'm not gonna make some elaborate system here. I just want to my, my idea is to simply filter out bigger particles from the rainwater. The first flush diverter will catch large things like leaves and larger debris, but I also want to keep out any other particles from entering my system. So there's a little bit of sand. I'll show you that here in a minute. Not too much, just enough to cover the gravel. Alright, now I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to flush some water through it. So, and it's raining out pretty hard, so I'm going to do that without showing you, so forgive me for that part. I'm going to just go flush some water through here and rinse out the system and settle the dirt and sand and make sure it's going to flow properly. Um, you know what, maybe I'm going to try, I'll turn the camera around and try to show you the flow test. Okay, I've got my camera propped up in the doorway of my shed. Let me turn my display so I can see what I'm looking at here. Oh yeah, good. Alright, so I've got a little bit of water. I rinsed out the same container I used a minute ago. I want to see how fast this will flush through. I also want to get it a little bit evenly poured. So I'm pouring a good amount of water and it's filling up. That's unfortunate. Okay, so for a light rain it's going to be fine, but for a heavier rain it's not flowing fast enough. It's filling up. Huh. Well, it was a good idea. For now, I'm going to use it because it's not raining really hard right now. But another problem I have is that the gravel, or the sand, has been distributed off of the gravel. I'm surprised because it's not that much sand. Yeah, I need a coarser mesh. I think... 
I think I might be able to get away with uh, just pea gravel. Because what I want to do is just take out the particles from entering my water. And of course sand in itself, if it filters through the gravel, is going to cause me trouble. So that's not quick enough. I had a friend, actually, uh, Bill from Bill and Rosa Off Grid Solar Cabin, told me that a uh, sand filter, the Army engineers had figured that the sand filter doesn't flow fast enough, and sure enough, that is the issue. Uh, I'm going to use it for today, because it's going to work, and I'm going to experiment on this, so stay tuned. I'm going to experiment on different different media. This is a really fine sand, and I'm thinking actually sandblasting uh, media might do a good job, because again, all I want to do is filter out the particles, the larger particles from entering my rainwater system. Now we don't have any torrential downpours on the way, so this is going to work for now. So let's go back in the shed. Okay, we're back again at the water tank, and I have clean water coming out the bottom. So I'm going to set this in here. Okay, there it is. Now the next step is to hook up my water supply out the wall of my shed, and sure enough, I've got to remeasure and readjust that. I just cut the hole, and I've got to cut that. Can you see how you can see that? So I'm going to cut that a little bit larger to fit my pipe. I figured smaller and cutting twice is better than cutting two big ones. Now I'm going to feed my pipes through and start gathering rainwater here into my large water tank. So we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, now I've got the pipe coming through the wall, going into another pot, the pot that I showed you that has more holes, and then down inside the filter pot. I mean, gently. I have it held together with baling wire out there for now because I did it in the rain. I'm standing out there working in the rain. So that helps to sort of somewhat distribute the uh, sand or the water among the, around the sand a little. But at least for now, it's hitting in the middle. And we've got water going into my large 275 gallon storage tank. Filtered water at that. So as long as it's a gentle rain, you can see the water just pooling in there a little. As long as it's a gentle rain like this, I won't have any troubles. When it's, uh, if I have a torrential downpour and I can get a whole lot of water, which I rarely get um, that hard of rain. I mean, it happens. It does happen. But it doesn't happen for long. Um, if I do get a torrential downpour, I'm going to lose some water over the sides. Worst case, that's what's going to happen when, during the, the heavy flush. But during the average rain what I'm getting right now this is sufficient and this is going to do the job so let me take you outside and show you what I've done see I've got the rain gutter routed just with two pieces of baling wire for now and going into the tiny house what I need to do let me try to get out of the rain what I'm going to have to do is run the pipe properly over to this wall and then attach the first flush diverter right here this T pipe on the wall but I still have a lot of work to do in the shed before I get that far. So for now I have a good working system, filling a 275 gallon tank. It's going to rain the rest of the day and I will continue collecting the rainwater today at least. I filled up those two tanks right there already yesterday. Those were completely filled already yesterday. And uh, so that's 80 gallons, 80 or 90 gallons right there. I think the blue thing is 40. So uh, I don't know if it's 30 or 40. But anyway, I've got maybe 80 gallons there, and then I'm going to be collecting whatever comes down today into the big tank. So, let it rain. I've got water to spare now. So, uh, off-grid rain rider collection for the tiny house on wheels. There's my water supply coming from the sky. Free water from heaven. Still raining heavy. Well, steady, I should say. I want to show you a change I had to make. The water was back flowing up into here, or building up, I should say, and I couldn't figure out why. So I started poking around in it, and air bubbles started coming through, and I realized this actually made an airtight seal. Believe it or not, an airtight seal on the tank. So I simply stuffed a piece of wire down alongside the uh, pot 
down into the tank and that allows the air to escape as fast as the water is flowing in for now. So now you learn by doing. So it's not a heavy heavy flow of water but it's coming in. It's just a trickle. Although it's raining it seems to be steady rain. It's not that much pouring into the tank at this time. Once it goes through the downspouts and it's condensed into a trickle that's all you get. So anyway though I am getting some water here in my uh, off-grid rainwater tank. You can see the level right here. So each of these is about 50 gallons. Wait, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, yeah. Each of these is 50 gallons so I've got a good 30 gallons of water now in there. So if it keeps raining today I should get another 50 at least into this tank and put it to good use. Now here I've got water siphoning from the outdoor tank running through a, a tube and siphoning into my the one that's connected to the tiny house. I should check it here. Uh, yep, it's time to pull it off. I don't know if you can see the water level. Yeah, you can. So that's just about filled. Good. So just keep moving water around because that one's connected to the, the tiny house plumbing. And eventually, it's going to be the big 275 gallon tank after I get the walls in here finished. I'll be hooking it up. And that'll be my main water supply. But for now, it's this little guy. And he's serving me well. All it takes is just to run a tube as needed, so it's no big deal.